Welcome to the SEI Podcast Series, a production of the Carnegie Mellon University Software Engineering Institute. The SEI is a federally funded research and development center sponsored by the U.S. Department of Defense. A transcript of today's podcast is posted on the SEI website at sei.cmu.edu slash podcasts. Hi, and welcome to the SEI podcast series. My name is Katie Stewart, and I'm a senior engineer in the SEI CERT division. I'm joined today by my colleague, Andrew Hoover, who leads the resilience engineering team, which is also in the CERT division at SEI. So today we're going to talk about scoring within the cybersecurity maturity model certification, or also known as the CMMC. So if you're new to CMMC, a quick background, it was created by the Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Acquisition and Sustainment to protect controlled unclassified information or CUI. So the idea with the CMMC is that it will apply across the DIB supply chain or the defense industrial base supply chain. So it's a new certification. There's a lot of information out there. We've put out a number of blogs, um, podcasts and webinars um, on our website. Um, So we'll link all of those in our podcast transcript. There's also the OSD, the DOD website, Um, which is the authoritative source on the model. And you can also reference the CMMC Accreditation Board website, which we'll link as well, which can give you up-to-date information about the accreditation process for CMMC. So today we're going to mainly talk about scoring and how the CMMC model will be scored for these organizations. But before we dive into that, just a little bit of background on myself. Um, I've been with the SEI about seven years now, primarily focused on risk and resilience um, and measurement and analysis, supporting the CERT division. Um, And like Andrew, I was one of the key architects um, of the CMMC model. So Andy, do you want to give a little bit more of your background? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Katie. Um, I've been at the SEI for about eight years. I'm a team lead on the uh, um, uh, resilience engineering team, which is part of the cyber risk and resilience directorate. And um, like Katie, for the past year and a half, um, I've been working on CMMC and uh, Katie and I are are two of the the chief architects of the model itself. Great. Thanks, Andy. So we're going to just dive into scoring CMMC. Um, If you're not familiar with CMMC, it has five levels. Um, So just at a high level, um, Andy, can you tell us a little bit about each of the five levels and why it matters for organizations to think about what level they want to pursue? Yeah, you know, that's a good question. So organizations really need to determine the best level for them to be at. And it's really going to kind of depend on what sort of contracts they, you know, they want to bid on for the DOD. Um, so the required CMMC level for each contract will be set by the DOD program managers, and it will be listed in the RFP and the RFIs for those contracts. So um, just a reminder that the DOD thinks around 80% or so of organizations are, are just going to need to achieve level one which is compliance with the basic safeguarding requirements in the FAR, the Federal Acquisition Regulations. Um, Level two is then just a transitional step. DOD's come out and said a few times now that they don't really anticipate level two being included in many contracts, if, if at all. It's just a step to help organizations that are at level one that want to ultimately achieve level three kind of progress through the maturity model. Um, At level three, an organization has accomplished all of NIST 800-171, and they've also accomplished 20 additional practices that that we added to the model. And this is the level that organizations will need to be at if they want to uh, store and process and have access to CUI data or controlled unclassified information. And then levels four and five are reserved for DOD special programs, and they primarily consist of um, proactive and progressive practices and more advanced things that are not going to be applicable to most organizations. Um, And so an organization, all organizations are going to need to achieve at least CMMC level one. 
in order to be awarded a DOD contract. And so again, you know, that's probably going to be at least 80% of organizations. Yeah, I think that's good. I think um, you, you hit on some good points there. Uh, another thing I'd add is, you know, the model, um, it, it has two sides to it, right? There's a process side and there's a practice side. Um, and so when you're pursuing one of these levels that you talked about, an organization must demonstrate achievement on both the practice side and the process side, right? Um, and if you're familiar with the model, you know, at level one, there's just demonstration of practice. But for levels two, three, four, and five, the organizations are going to have to show that they can do both the practice side and the process side of the model. Um, so I think that's a key point uh, in the scoring as well. Yeah, that's a good point. And I'm glad you mentioned that because, um, you know, that it is kind of a misunderstood aspect of the model that you have to do both at levels two through five. Something else that's important to note is that um, the model and the practices are cumulative. So just for example, an organization that might want to achieve say I don't know, level three, you know, which is where you're going to have to be to have access to CUI data. Not only do you have to complete the practices and the processes at level three, but also at level two, and the practices at level one. So it's cumulative. You have to do uh, accomplish everything at that level plus the lower levels in order to move forward. And the same, of course, goes for levels four and five. In order to achieve level four, you only you not only have to um, accomplish the level four practices and processes, but also those at the lower levels. Yeah, and one last thing that I'll add um, is that yeah, there are two sides, right? And and you're going to be assessed on each side, but you're actually only going to receive one score. Um, so if the organization is pursuing level three, like you described, but they complete all of the, the level one, two, and three practices, but only show process maturity at a level two, that organization is only going to receive a level two certification. Um, so I think that that's important to understand. So your awarded CMMC level will only correspond to the lowest level achievement on either side of the model, um, regardless of what you, you know, set out to, to, per, to pursue or to per achieve when you go for your assessment. So Katie, I think what you're saying there is that if an organization attempts to achieve level three, but say they, they haven't implemented one of the practices or processes at level three, uh, they're not gonna walk away empty, right? No, they'll walk away with a level two, right? So it will be the lowest level that they achieve. Um, so that I, I think that's another good point that, you know, level two is really a transitional level. Um, if, if an organization is is seeking to, to get a level three certification, but they fall a little short, they will be le awarded a level two if they meet those requirements and, and can demonstrate that they're working towards um, the protection of CUI or controlled unclassified information. Okay, cool. So just to recap, kind of the three big main points that we covered here. Um, organizations are assessed for practices and processes at every level except for level one, because level one only contains practices. Um, yep. Scoring is cumulative. So you not only have to achieve the practices and the processes, at the at level um, of, of certification, but also at the levels below that. And then finally, you'll only, see, only achieve one CMMC um, level, which corresponds to the lowest of the two scores between practices and processes. Yep, I All think that, right. that covers it. Um, so thank you guys for listening. Um, we'll include all links uh, to the resources that we mentioned in this podcast. Um, again, there's a lot of information out there that we've put out that dives into um, a lot of the different aspects of CMMC, not just scoring. Um, so please don't hesitate to reach out. You can find us on LinkedIn or you can email us at info at sei.cmu.edu. Um, and you'll find this podcast available off the SEI website. Um, and anywhere else you would find your podcasts, including iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. So thank you very much.
Thanks for joining us. This episode is available where you download podcasts, including SoundCloud, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. It is also available on the SEI website at sei.cmu.edu slash podcasts and the SEI's YouTube channel. This copyrighted work is made available through the Software Engineering Institute, a federally funded research and development center sponsored by the U.S. Department of Defense. For more information about the SEI and this work, please visit www.sei.cmu.edu. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email us at info at sei.cmu.edu. Thank you.